Let's talk through the infantry terminators and demon engines of the Death Guard, and which of the long-suffering legion of Mortarion are looking best and worst in-game right now. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Death Guard, and I thought in this video we'd talk through each and every unit in the Death Guard Index, and roughly how I think they're stacking up in-game at the moment. In early 10th, Death Guard do seem to be having really quite a rough time of it, one of the lowest win rates in tournaments out of any of the factions in the game at the moment, and very few if any high event placings at the moment. I think you could certainly argue that you'd have an easier time winning with just about anything else. That being said though, they still have some interesting tricks within their index, and certainly at a more casual level, without going up against all the top tier meta hotness, Death Guard can definitely be made to work and with an optimised list played well, can do okay against the mid-tier factions of Warhammer 40k, though in general they're probably one of the factions that's going to be an uphill struggle more than most. In this video I thought I'd talk through some initial impressions of Death Guard units within the index. I've organised them into four tiers of rough unit strength, based on both a big poll by you guys, my own opinions, plus the better placing Death Guard tournament lists right now, and the lists that tend to be placing better at big events for them, even if there might not be a whole load to choose from. They still definitely do have a few interesting options, though I feel like Games Workshop will probably have them front and centre for points buffs later on, so hopefully a fair bunch of this list will change quite significantly when they do their autumn points updates. In any case, let's jump straight into it though, talk through the Death Guard Index, and of course as always feel free to tell me if you think I've ranked anything too high or too low, tier lists are a little bit arbitrary of course, different things definitely could be a bit stronger or weaker depending on what sort of playstyle and build that you're going for. First up for a few of the units that I'd probably rate weaker than most are the Death Guard Icon Bearer, Spawn and Miasmic Malignifier. These were voted as some of the lowest by you guys, I would admit that their use seems a bit limited. The Icon Bearer for 55 points gives you 2 buffs, extra objective control to your unit and a once per game contagion range boost. Not completely useless, but there's far better Virion members for Plague Marines for 55 points. I just can't really see him being taken over things like the Foul Blight, Spawn, Putrefier or the Tallyman. Death Guard Spawner maybe have a little bit more time for, they're 75 points, have a 5 plus feel no pain and toughness 5, so at least are reasonably tanky, and if you do manage to just fail to kill one, they'll probably regenerate back to full health by the next time your opponent attacks them. Their price tag just feels really quite disappointing though, particularly as they cost more than things like the Thousand Suns Spawn who get an invulnerable save, though I suppose they have some advantage with their contagions of Nurgle getting a minus 1 toughness on nearby enemy units, that could help them out against a few things I suppose. I think if I were going for cheap chaff trading units for Death Guard I'd be a lot more tempted by Pox Walkers or Cultists, probably going to have a bit less damage output and can't maul as many Space Marines, but more points for objective control and a bit more durable against really high damage weapons which could kill the spawn pretty easily. I guess if you had 15 or 20 points spare to upgrade some of your cheap chaff, I suppose they could be okay for that I guess. Finally there's the Miasmic Malignifier, perhaps one of the weakest Death Guard units right now I think. 115 points for a little fortification that has a small close range shooting attack and gives you minus 1 to hit for units nearby. Not absolutely terrible and can add a bit of durability to the army, but I feel like it's just nowhere near doing enough for its points at 115 points. The minus 1 to hit just isn't really quite worth it that much. And while it is fairly tanky, I guess it's at least somewhat likely to be fairly well exposed. Just seems like you're probably going to be better off with another unit that you can move around the board and actually take objectives with and threaten the enemy a bit more. Next up and moving into tier 3, I'd rate these as a bit more usable but perhaps a bit overshadowed. They generally appear to be rarer picks within competitive lists, though I'd say most of these are somewhat playable and I would rate a fair few of these on the upper end of tier 3 or the lower end of tier 2. First up there's the Death Guard Predator tanks, 130 for the Annihilator or 140 for the Destructor. Out of the two I feel like the Annihilator has the better focus role, it is kind of okay, dedicated anti-tank sat at the back of the army, really quite a long range and does average some at least fairly reliable damage on enemy units. Against a vehicle with a 3 plus save you average around about 6 or 7 wounds on them turn on turn, that would get a bit worse if you get cover or invulnerable saves though. For 130 points I don't think that's terrible, the strength 12 last cannons could be kind of meaningful with contagions of Nurgle for big things like knights potentially. I'd probably rate the Annihilator on borderline up in tier 2, and the Destructor is perhaps a little bit less useful, that's the one that gets a bit of extra AP against infantry and lower AP weapons. Next up is the Death Guard Hellbrute at 155 points. Hellbrutes generally tend to be a bit overcosted for their raw damage and defence in the Chaos Armies I think, this one's no real exception to that. Again it has a somewhat interesting buff though, as it can fire out a Contagion debuff to make one unit minus one toughness at much greater range. Sometimes that could be a big deal at making one unit a bit easier to wound with your shooting, but it depends on the toughness of the target as to whether it's actually relevant for your guns. 
Otherwise, when it charges into combat, it could be quite potent with a bunch of mortal wound impact hits, plus potentially tank shock if you take one of its dedicated close combat weapons. Could be okay as a counter charge threat, though I feel like its melee is always a little bit questionable seeing as it only moves 6 inches and interacts badly with terrain. Probably a bit on the weak side overall, I think. The most interesting thing, I think, is that Contagion debuff. Next up is the Death Guard Land Raider at 250 points, a big tanky vehicle with some anti-armor shots with those Soul Shatter LAS cannons. And as with Land Raiders in the rest of the game, it's kind of paying a premium to deliver a unit to melee at longer range than you'd normally be able to get. You could maybe use it for Plague Marines, plus something like a Death Guard Lord, perhaps. That perhaps does seem kind of overkill for their melee damage profile, though. Probably Death Shroud would be the best fit, though what's annoying for those guys is that you can't take them alongside a character and still fit it in the Land Raider. You generally want the max unit of 6 plus a character, but there's only 6 transport slots. So if you did want to field a big unit of Death Shroud in here, you'd either have the option of fielding one less Death Shroud than you've paid the points for, or not taking a character and not getting their minus 1 to wound rule. Kind of annoying and clunky and might be a little bit better if you could take a full unit of Death Shroud plus a character, but even then you might just be better off getting them in with Rapid Ingress maybe. Next up is the Defiler at 205 points, I generally rate this one to the lower end of tier 3, maybe borderline tier 4. It's got some general purpose shooting and some fairly hard hitting melee with strength 16 that can threaten big tanks and vehicles, but it just seems to be a little bit over costed at 205 points, could come down by really quite a lot and only be kind of mediocre I think, and I think its special rule is kind of underwhelming just being the one for scuttling over bits of terrain. Finally, for the frontline units in this tier, I've also chosen to rank the Blight Lord Terminators down here. For these, I kind of was on the fence, and I could have happily put them on tier 2. The main reason I'm ranking them here is that I feel like the Death Shroud generally outcompete them fairly heavily for the damage dealing Terminators that the Death Guard want to bring, and for the most part, I'd be a bit more tempted by them. They are fairly tanky for a Toughness 6 Terminator profile for 35 points, they're some of the cheapest Terminators available in the game. And they generally feel like they're meant to be attrition terminators with lots of low AP lethal hits attacks at range and at AP-2 in melee with their plague weapons. You could make a squad of them really quite annoyingly hard to remove, maybe with a sorcerer's minus one damage, or perhaps Typhus's minus one to hit maybe. I think that they could at least give a bunch of armies a pause when you're trying to deal with them. Again, maybe rapid ingress them somewhere where they can't take the entire enemy army's worth of fire, tank a few hits and then make the charge the next turn. They do at least have a fair bit of anti-infantry type shooting at range with lethal hits as well, which could be alright with a Lord of Virulence. I feel like starting on the board might be a bit questionable though with only a 4 inch move, and doubly so in a really big investment unit if the enemy can either move block them or hit them with minus 2 to move abilities. I definitely wouldn't say they're useless though, and potential for a big investment thing to build around, though I think that most people would rather go with Death Shrouds at the moment. Otherwise perhaps another borderline one that I could have been persuaded to rank a bit higher is the Malignant Plague Caster, 75 points with some general purpose psychic shooting, and then he seems to be a bit of a movement control and melee debuff character, hitting them with a minus one to wound, which could make your plague marines a bit more tanky against a melee threat, and can also slow down enemy infantry that get hit by a psychic shooting attack, though you have to be within 12 inches of the unit to debuff them, so it kind of means that his unit's in strike range already, so I don't think that really adds quite as much value as longer range rules with that ability. Overall, I don't really think that he'd stand up bad, could be quite powerful at debuffing a melee unit in some matchups, but he probably wouldn't be my first choice to lead Plague Marines compared with some of the Virion members, perhaps a low tier 2 or high tier 3, maybe. Finally, for perhaps slightly more borderline characters, is the Death Guard Demon Prince, the standard one's 170 points, and he's got the at least fairly interesting rule of giving a 6 plus feel no pain to infantry nearby, and he's at least okay durability for the cost at 170 points, and he gets T11 unlike most other demon princes. Maybe could be okay to justify if he's standing in the middle of a vast Death Guard infantry formation, though realistically I feel like the Plague Marines and Terminators don't just want to be foot slogging up the board at the moment, or at least not as a great big Plague Marine Death Guard horde really. I think I would rate the on foot one significantly higher than the winged one really. The big 45 points difference is kind of massive, it's a little bit less durable, and it doesn't get that feel no pain type aura instead of swapping it out for devastating wounds on the charge. Definitely not bad, but I still don't think it's anywhere near the amount of damage threat to justify 215 points. Next up is the Death Guard Lord and the Terminator Lord, the standard Lord 75 and the Terminator one is 100. These guys give a nice simple damage boost of re-rolling hit rolls of 1 for their own unit, and units within Contagion range of them have a chance of taking some mortal wounds as well. Their melee is both okay as well, though maybe not quite as good as some of the unique Death Guard characters. I think overall, for the points and what they bring, they're probably a bit weaker than the unique Lords of Virulence or Lord of Contagion, 
At least for the Terminator units, they seem a bit better. I guess the Lord could be okay for a big stacked up play Marine unit, maybe combining with one of the Virion members. Finally in Tier 3, I've also chosen to rank the Plague Surgeon and the Noxious Blightbringer. Again, probably outcompeted by the other three Virion folks, I think. Out of the two, I slightly prefer the Plague Surgeon. 65 points to heal infantry characters and restore a slain bodyguard each turn. Perhaps not awful, but you need to do that multiple times to really justify his existence in the unit. Plus, a lot of the time, if infantry characters are taking damage, they're probably not long for this world anyway, unless it was just a random incidental sniper shot or something. It's going to be bad news for him if the Play Marine unit just does get exposed and just gets pretty much wiped out in one round of shooting or something. You might get pretty much no value from him there. Otherwise, the Noxious Blightbringer seems to be borderline value again compared with some of the others. Rerolling advances and charges isn't terrible and could help some Plague Marines get to the midfield objectives a little bit faster, I suppose. And as Battleshock debuffs go, a minus 2 to the test within Contagion range could be worse. It's one of the better debuffs out there. But Battleshock just seems to be something that's often really not cared about in Warhammer 40k, and also kind of dependent on your opponent having a unit that's heavily damaged but not actually destroyed. Overall, I think they're both just a little bit not really worth it, considering they don't really add any big damage to their own units. Moving onwards and upwards to Tier 2, here are units that I consider a bit stronger for the Death Guard, generally pretty usable and seem to appear from time to time in competitive lists, at least a fair bit more so than the other ones already mentioned, though perhaps aren't the single most standout units in the Index in my opinion. First up, I thought I'd just briefly mention allies, as they are kind of relevant with Chaos having so many. Obviously not actual Death Guard units, but could be helpful in support. I'd say out of the Chaos Demons and the Chaos Knight options that you have access to, Chaos Knight War Dogs could be interesting enough, adding a bit of raw might and some anti-tank. Probably the War Dog Brigands or the Stalkers or Huntsmen are the ones to add the most damage threat. Some strong Melter Fire and maybe a bit of melee as well. The Brigand also has a nice chain gun that can get extra AP. Perhaps not too bad to have some units with high objective control that move around the board really quite quickly as well. For the demons, Nurgle has really quite a lot of options, though maybe the Nurglings could be one of the most interesting. 40 points for tiny little annoyance units. They've got quite a lot of wounds, so need at least a little bit of focus fire for the enemy to shoot them down. Firepower that's not going to be going into the rest of the Death Guard army. And while they don't have any objective control to actually take objectives, they're pretty much ideal for tactical objectives and pretty perfect with their infiltrates to gum up the enemy front line if that's going to be a big deal. If, say, you could pin a whole load of Chaos Knight War Dogs or Imperial Knight Armages in their deployment zone with a unit of Nurglings, then that's going to be a massive deal. I feel like a unit or two of these is kind of fine just for an advantage winning the mission. Back to the actual Death Guard though, and next up is the Mephitic Blight Hauler. 115 points and he can take 1-3 to three of them. These are pretty much dedicated close range anti-armor vehicles. They pack a missile launcher and a multi-melter. Plus actually do have a little bit of threats towards enemy light infantry as well. Should be able to bully them fairly well with their plague spurts plus their moors in combat. I think they do their job okay for the points cost. I would probably rate them towards the lower end of tier 2 though. You might seriously be better off with things like Predator Annihilators with the longer range and the higher strength weapons. And again, things like War Dog Brigands could be another solid option if you do want some Melter goodness. Next up, we've got the Plague Marines at 20 points per model and you can take them in squads of 5, 7 or 10 now. Good that Games Workshop did patch that bit about not allowing them to be fielded in the holy number that comes in the kit. I'd say Plague Marines are perhaps in a bit of a weird place. Maybe not hugely efficient in their own right, but kind of necessary for fielding really quite a lot of the characters. I think a fair few of the Virion members are pretty interesting, and those efficient support characters seem to be good enough to encourage people to play Plague Marines. They do seem to appear in more competitive lists than not. I feel like perhaps their durability is the letdown thing for them. Ideally, you'd really want them to be tanky objective holders, but with just toughness 5 and a 3 plus save and 2 wounds these days, they just really don't do that all that well. There's really quite a lot of things in the game with like AP1 and damage 2 that just go through a standard marine profile really quite easily. I feel like their unique Battleshock special rule was a real letdown. Something to give them more durability on objectives I think could have been far more fluffy and also more powerful for them. They can at least bring a fair bit of threat to the table. They can fire out some blight launcher shots and special weapons with shooting and in combat they can pack a punch with some heavy plague weapons. So definitely somewhat threatening against medium to heavy infantry. To get them onto objectives, you could think about using a bigger squad with a Rhino, maybe. That could help them out a bit with their slightly limited movement. Overall, I'd say they're not really in the best place and not really a unit that's worth shoring up the army with, but probably worth having at least some to run a few of the better characters, perhaps. While we're talking about Plague Marines, you can also run the Death Guard Rhino at 80 points, a cheap transport to deliver Plague Marines to the front line. Kind of does what it does for other factions, 
Nothing enormously wrong with it. How good it is, it's going to be tied to how good Plague Marines are though. And even then it's probably not worth buying one for literally every Plague Marine unit. Maybe just a couple of ones to get to midfield objectives rapidly. And then have some more moving up the board a bit more slowly in support. I'd definitely say it's usable enough though. Has a few anti-infantry shots, a firing deck that could fire some blight launches or special weapons out the top. And a bit of auto repairing as well. Next up are the Poxwalkers, for 60 points for 10, or 120 for 20 of them. I think they still do a fine enough job to be Death Guard Chaff Infantry. Probably kind of balanced against the Cultists though now in my opinion. They both do the job okay for cheap screening, objective grabbing, or maybe trying to do secondary objectives out of strategic reserves. The Poxwalkers main advantage is their durability compared with the Cultists. A toughness of 4 and a 5 plus feel no pain make them a little bit harder to shift compared with standard mortals. Plus they might potentially opportunistically regenerate a few models if they happen to be skirmishing with enemy light infantry and they manage to kill a few in combat. Not usually going to be super relevant I think given that they only hit on a 5+, plus, but might actually be enough to make a serious difference in a close fight with some other light infantry that are more or less their equivalents. As for downsides they only move 4 inches and they've got a leadership of 8+, plus, so they'll be super unreliable to capture any points if they get depleted. Though I guess they'll be a little bit slower to get to that point compared with cultists. I think they're kind of interesting with Typhus as well. I've seen a fair few lists running Typhus plus a big block of 20 Pox Walkers. He can potentially make them regenerate a bit better with his mortal wound attack, plus actually add some serious melee threat to the units layered behind 20 bodies worth of wounds. Next up is the Feet of Bloat Drone, a little bit of a faster moving Death Guard unit for 135 points, a toughness 9 10 wound vehicle with a 5 plus invulnerable save. I have the option either of a flesh mower, twin plague spitters, or a heavy blight launcher, which I think are a bit better in this edition compared with the last one, where I would have said it would have been flesh mower all the way. I think in 10th edition I'd actually now be potentially most tempted by the twin plague spitters that wound infantry on a 2 plus. Makes it genuinely quite a dangerous unit for just floating up the board and just purging a whole bunch of enemy light infantry from objectives. And ideally if you can end your movement within threat range of an objective you could threaten overwatch there, potentially creating some no go zones for enemy infantry unless they want to get really torn up. I don't think that the flesh mower or the blight launcher are all that terrible though. A whole bunch of mid strength, mid AP and damage 2 attacks either 6 at long range with the Blight Launcher, or 10 in melee with the Flesh Mower. Neither of them I'd rate as particularly stand out on the damage front though compared with some of the other options. Next we've got the Death Guard Cultist, 55 points for 10 of them, or 110 points for 20. I'd take them in squads of 10 to be cheap and disposable. They're a little bit cheaper than the Pox Walkers, definitely a lot less tough with only toughness 3 and a 6 plus save, as opposed to the 5 plus feel no pain. But they do have a few fairly decent advantages over the Pox Walkers, they move a fair bit faster to get to the objectives a bit quicker. They get to scout move into the midfield right from the early game so they can jump onto objectives and perhaps hopefully force the opponents to trade units with them. And again are cheap enough to be just used for screening and secondary objectives. You could potentially be putting a unit into strategic reserve if you want to, if you didn't want to scout them into the midfield. Compared with the pox walkers as well they do actually have a little bit of range threat. They get a heavy stubber, flamer and grenade launcher all built in. Not really going to be a good damage dealing unit, but might just give them a little bit more bite than you might expect against some light or medium infantry. Overall again I'd say they're usable in small numbers, probably competing with Pox Walkers and Nurglings for the most part, maybe Chaos Spawn as well. I feel like it's useful enough to have at least some of those type of units around, but not go too heavy on them. Finally for the carriage that I've chosen to rank in tier 2, first up we have the Foul Blight Spawn at 55 points. I think for the raw value I think he's a very very solid support character still, definitely with a similar sort of vibe to what he brought in 9th edition. He brings a fairly savage Plague Sprayer with Strength 7, AP 2 and Damage 2, and Anti-Infantry 2 plus, making him really quite a big addition to the unit's firepower. Quite nice to have with a big unit jumping out of a Rhino or something, and then also gives the unit fight first as well. Meaning that if an enemy unit charges the Plague Marines, then usually they're going to be able to get the jump on them, and hopefully hit them with a whole bunch of heavy plague weapons before they get to hit back. I think as support characters go, he's very very good. Maybe the main issue is being tied to Plague Marines as damage dealer type units and having to build quite big into them. Plus kind of depends a bit on what sort of enemy army you're fighting. It's going to be way more value against a melee army than a shooting army. If the enemy is forced to charge them though, and they're on an objective and they get to fight first, could be quite a nice combo with the melee boost on objective stratagems. I'd rate that as one of the ones that's the strongest for the Death Guard, getting a whole bunch of sustained hits. 
Overall, I do think he's very good. I probably would have raced him top tier if Plague Marines were a bit more common to build around. If they were a bit stronger, he'd be a bit better, I think. Kind of a shame that you can't have these sort of buffs, say, hidden in a Death Shroud unit. Otherwise, one of the other characters I really like to boost the Plague Marines is the Biologus Putrefier. His job seems to be to make them hit really quite a lot harder when they get the jump on the enemy, and seems like he'd be a very good choice for a Plague Marine unit being delivered out of a Rhino. Use the fairly big movement to throw them onto an objective, and also get within 12 inch range of some enemy units and deal some damage. I think he brings really quite a lot of power to the unit, he's got hyper blight grenades for a bunch of heavy bolter style shooting with the blast keyword. He makes the unit get critical hits on a 5 plus both at range and in melee, so that means a lot more lethal hits and a lot more auto wounds on the enemy target. And then on top of that he gets a 0 CP grenade stratagem once per game, usually good for around about 3 mortal wounds if you roll average. And that's quite a nice boost to damage just in itself if you do manage to throw that against something meaningful. Between all that, he definitely makes Plague Marine shooting a fair bit more scary and helps them in combat as well. Again, seems like a very good option for a 10-man Rhino Rush Plague Marine squad if you'd like one. Definitely in solid competition with the Blight Spawn though. I feel like the Fights First probably has a bit more value overall. But I think that you could make arguments for both of them and you could even double up if you want a really expensive unit but then you're getting on for a unit that costs almost 400 points for one rhino full of marines. Perhaps a few too many eggs in one basket for that one when it's not really all that tough for the cost. Finally for 100 points there's the Lord of Contagion which I could have been tempted to rank up in tier 1. I feel like it's a bit borderline between high tier 2 or low tier 1. Who is competing against both the Lord of Virulence and the Death Guard Sorcerer, both of which I think are very solid Terminator characters. He brings some solid extra melee threats to either Blight Lords or Death Shroud, a whole bunch of Strength 8, AP 2 and Damage 3 with his attacks, and he also has the option for sweep attacks against Hordes. His Vector of Disease special rule means that when he's leading a unit, each time a model makes a melee attack, he gets to re-roll the hit roll. And that one in particular is pretty excellent for anything with lethal hits, particularly if you're fighting against something that's big and tough, as he could very justifiably just re-roll everything that isn't a 6 and try and fish for those 6s, get as many auto wounds as he possibly can, plus any other hits that hit natively on the second roll. Again, he could be quite good with the Sanguous Flux stratagem to give you either sustained hits 1 or 2 to double down on any of those potent 6s. On top of that, he's at least fairly tanky for a character, and if the enemy does manage to wipe his units and bring him down, every time he loses a wound in combat, he's got a chance to deal mortal wounds to the enemy, so you do get a little bit of a consolation prize if he's destroyed in combat. Overall, I think he's a solid enough HQ. He does have strong competition from the Lord of Virulence, though, plus the Death Guard Sorcerer. Finally, we get to Tier 1, units that are currently considered to be some of the strongest things that the Death Guard can field. Fairly common staples in competitive lists. Plague Burst Crawlers don't really seem to have gone anywhere in one of the most standout units in the faction. 175 points, so fairly expensive. Okay durability with T10, a 2 plus save and 12 wounds. And they should likely be able to get cover just poking out from behind ruins and things to engage foes with entropy cannons or plague spitters. Their main weapon is the Plague Burst Mortar, firing out strength 8, AP 1 and damage 2 shots exactly where they aren't wanted with some lethal hits. And ideally, if you were going heavy on them, you'd probably want a Lord of Virulence to spot for them and give them a plus one to hit and ignoring cover if he can see their targets. Then for their secondary response and weapons, I feel like both of them are usable at the moment. The Entropy Cannons give you a few more big hitting anti-tank shots at strength 10, where the Plague Spitters are pretty murderous against light infantry with the anti-infantry keyword and again could threaten some big overwatch if the opponent decides to drop something nearby. They also make infantry test battle shock as well, which is kind of limited value in the enemy turn, but not nothing. And overall, it seems that they are quite popular as perhaps the most commonly played Death Guard vehicle. The majority of competitive lists that have done well that I've seen generally tend to run two or three. Next up, we've got the Primarch himself in Mortarian. I feel like he might not be quite as standout as some of the other demon Primarchs out there, particularly Magnus, but he still seems to be a pretty interesting centerpiece for the army if you want him. I'd probably rate him either towards the lower end of tier 1 or higher tier 2. I think he's pretty playable, but isn't really auto-include at his price tag. I did notice that he happened to be played in Mr. Aiden Smalley's lists. One of the players who seems to be having the most success with Death Guard competitively at the moment, such as the state that they're in. Mortarian is at least solidly tanky for his points. A 5 plus feel no pain, a big toughness 12, a 2 plus save and 16 wounds. He should usually be able to get him cover against ranged attacks with how big his profile is. And if there's enough line of sight blocking ruins on the board, you won't be able to be shot off the board immediately turn 1. He doesn't have the towering keyword, so you can hide him behind obscuring terrain if you can find enough ruins to cover his big profile. 
for his actual damage threat, I wouldn't say is outstanding for a huge 370 points. A fairly anti-infantry ranged attack, plus his lantern pistol. I think his melee is okay with a bunch of attacks at damage 4, or some sweep attacks with damage 1. Definitely going to take a chunk out of just about anything that he charges, but most of the time he's not going to be laying waste to entire elite squads in one go. He does give some useful buffs to nearby Death Guard though, either giving the army the benefit of cover as they move up, so maybe they don't need to position quite as hard to take advantage of it, though it's usually at least fairly easy to get cover saves in 10th edition, or an aura of re-rolling wound rolls of 1. Helpful enough both at range or in melee, but won't be particularly useful for anything with lethal hits, so perhaps a little bit less used to the Death Guard than it might have been in some other armies. He's also got an interesting aura of ignores modifiers to nearby Death Guard units. Could be pretty handy if any of your units are getting debuffs, for example for movement debuffs to Terminator units. It helps to counter stealth with shooting, and I have seen some debate as to whether or not it applies to damage modifiers to the attacks made by weapons by the units, I've seen some people say it does and some people say it doesn't. To my understanding, the majority of tournaments have ruled it that it generally will help you ignore modifiers like minus one damage for Redemptor Dreadnoughts, though I think there's enough confusion that it probably needs an FAQ from Games Workshop at some stage. Between all that, it seems like there's enough draw for at least some people to be playing him competitively with some success. Might need a bit more careful play than some centerpieces though. I think you really need to keep him alive and dealing damage for most of the game as he is going to be being taken in lieu of really quite a lot of other units. Next up, we've got the Death Shroud Terminators, 140 points for 3, or 280 for 6 of them. Along with the Plague Burst Crawlers, these guys seem to be perhaps the most common Death Guard staple damage dealers right now. Most lists that I've seen taking 2 or 3 units of them, and generally being seen as a lot more favourable than the Blight Lords. They do cost really quite a lot more points per model, so don't have the sheer raw tankiness of the Blight Lords per point, they do get a minus one to wound debuff against heavy weapon attacks, and generally they're mostly going to be the things that were threatening them anyway. They do need a character to lead them to get that, though they do have multiple good options with Typhus, the Lord of Virulence, the Sorcerer, or Lord of Contagion. In combat, they've got some solid generalist attacks with four attacks hitting on twos, strength eight, AP two, and damage two with lethal hits. The auto wounds are definitely helpful for punching up against tougher stuff and they should be dispatching most medium to heavy infantry with that as well. They also get some anti-infantry plague spurt pistols as well, which I think are definitely useful when you've got a fair few of them. Could certainly roast an enemy light infantry squad before charging something else. Plus an entire unit of them could genuinely be kind of threatening in Overwatch as well, for lighter units moving towards objectives. I think for these guys I'd probably be most tempted to try and deliver them via rapid ingress. Maybe could risk a 9-inch charge with a command point if you're feeling brave, but if you can set them up in your opponent's turn somewhere that's safe from the vast majority of their shooting, and then next turn move forward and then charge, it should be getting a charge that's significantly shorter than 9 inches. Overall, I think they seem pretty strong as Death Guard go, and I'd argue that I've got 4 good choices for Terminator characters to lead them, which all have their advantages and disadvantages. Talking of which, next up we have Typhus, though he's typically more often seen alongside Poxwalkers. He's 115 points, and can make a zombie horde a fair bit more threatening, He's 235 points with a unit of 20 pox walkers in tow, though he could join Terminators if he'd like. He has three main advantages compared with the other Terminator characters. His Man Reaper gets a strength 9, so is a little bit more threatening against some things. That could be meaningful against things like Toughness 9 or Toughness 10 vehicles with Contagions in play. He can make pox walkers or his Terminator squad a bit more annoying to remove from the board, giving them a minus 1 to hit. Quite nice layer durability on either them or Terminators, to be honest. And then he also has some fairly chunky range threat as well, throwing out usually D6 mortal wounds on a 2+, plus against one unit within 18 inches. And as it's not technically a shooting attack, I believe that you can use that to just delete some lone operatives if they're outside of 12. And it's not subject to the usual shooting restrictions, like whether you fall them back or anything. If he does happen to be leading pox walkers, it's even more valuable, as he can potentially restore some to the units. Again, quite a solid all-rounder, I think. Fairly punchy melee. A good durability boost to his unit, and some fairly scary shooting that's reliable against most targets. Definitely one of the most solid Terminator characters, in my opinion. Next up, for 115 points as well, there's the Lord of Virulence to rival Typhus, though. His stats are maybe a little bit weedier, only getting damage to melee and a twin-linked plague spear instead of his mortal wounds. Instead, his main thing is being a synergy piece for Plague Burst Crawlers. If he can see a unit, then any blast weapons that the Death Guard fire at them get plus one to hit and ignore cover, basically counteracting the barrage penalty that the Plague Burst Mortars would usually take. Quite nice to have him running around and leading a squad of Death Shroud perhaps towards the front lines, and then hopefully getting line of sight on things that most of the rest of the army can't see. 
then hopefully hammer some enemy objective scorers or some fragile but dangerous things off the board out of line of sight. He also grants reroll wound rolls with ranged attacks for the unit that he's leading as well. I say that perhaps compared with some of the rest, it might make him kind of nice for Blight Lords as well. They've got a lot more shooting going for them compared with the Death Shroud, but it's still kind of fine with them and their Plague Spurts to just be even more threatening to lighter infantry. Overall seems pretty solid, maybe not quite as strong for the actual Terminator unit that he's leading, but very helpful to have somewhere to help out a battery of Plague Burst Mortars if you have them. Finally, for the fairly good Death Guard Terminator characters, we've got the Sorcerer and Terminator armour at 80 points. He's quite significantly cheaper than all of the rest of them. Still has a tanky enough profile with 5 wounds, toughness 6 and a 4 plus invulnerable. And he brings some extra fond damage and defence to the unit. His psychic shooting attack I think is fairly strong if you risk the hazardous. 2d6 shots at strength 6, AP 2 and damage 1. That's definitely going to clear out some light infantry very reliably. And then once per game it goes into absolute rage mode, getting plus 2 strength and plus 2 damage. So you get to fire out strength 8, AP 2 and damage 3 shots. That's going to be very threatening to things like Space Marine Terminators or Light Vehicles. On top of that, he also brings one of the best durability boosts to the army. A minus one damage in the fight phase that goes off on a 2+, plus could be absolutely massive against enemy units that charge you with a damage 2 or damage 3 weapon profile. Shame it doesn't work against shooting, so I guess there's some trade-off versus Typhus's minus one to hit. Overall though, I think he has really quite a lot of extra value for just 80 points. An extra Terminator body in the unit with his own damage and defence, a big Alpha Strike psychic damage hit, plus some fairly significant extra durability in combat. Finally, last but by no means least, is the Death Guard Taliban for 55 points. He still seems to be very tempting to have somewhere on the board in a Death Guard army, generating a command point of his on the board on 2d6 and rolling a 7 plus each turn. That's kind of already fairly good value for the 55 points. Should add up to, on average, around about 3 CP over the course of the game with average rolling. Might be a tiny bit less good than it sounds if you're taking tactical secondaries and occasionally you have to drop them, as you wouldn't get the extra CP on top of that. Otherwise though, he just gives a nice uncomplicated plus one to hit for the Plague Marine unit that he's leading. A very nice extra damage boost, both at range and in melee. Kind of hard to go too far wrong with that on a 10-man unit. It's pretty much worth it via the math alone. Plus chipping in with his own plasma pistol, adds a tiny bit of weight to the squad with an extra body with four wounds on it. I think between the plus one to hit and the command point thing, he is very easy to justify. Seems even a handy enough upgrade for a smaller five-man unit of Plague Marines if you want him. Just because he's chipping in value with the command points, never mind the actual damage and defence to the unit. So anyway, there we have it. A quick discussion of each and every Death Guard unit in the Index so far, and roughly how I'd rate their strength in Warhammer 40k now. As always, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Look forward to hearing any other ideas or alternative takes. And fingers crossed Games Workshop shows them a bit of love in the points updates to get them a bit more on par with the midfield of the 40k factions. All the best of luck spreading the grandfather's blessing until then though. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, but I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.